Okay, let's talk about that native word. It's all just a thing of our imagination. Everything you ate, probably for breakfast, is non-native. But we do really well on it. Australia is full of non-natives that actually have huge benefit for us. From avocados to bees to huge numbers of dung beetles. Every single one of you is clothed in non-natives and thank God for that. Otherwise this class would be awkward. <laughs> you know? So there are non-natives everywhere that we have huge benefit out of. We should not be saying to ourselves, oh, is that a native or is that a non-native? What we should be saying is, is that good for biodiversity? Does it create stability and resilience or does it go the other way? Now, if you've got an environment where you have big ups and downs, rabbits, cane toads, what's that telling us about the environment? It's unsafe, it's got low biodiversity. And yes, we've got to be really careful when we add species, especially if you're adding them into a, a, a low biodiversity environment. But let us not just say, oh, because it's a non-native, it, it came from the next farm or the next valley or the next state or the next country. Who decrees that? It's human. Ascension Island is a tiny little blob in the ocean right there. Now, it's a really young volcanic island, virtually no soil, really coarse gravels, cracks between rocks, things like that. So the Brits acknowledged how important it was for the sailing ships. So they claimed it, put a garrison on it. And a couple of times ships would pull in there and all the soldiers were dead because they ran out of water. There was no water cycle on this island. There was nothing to hold the moisture. And um, I think it was Wallace who was on the Beagle of Darwin. He went there and he came up with this plan. He got, I think, 650 bags of seed from Kew, he got salt bushes from South Africa, he got eucalypts from Australia, and he got bamboos from Asia. And those soldiers spent literally all their days scratching between the rocks, planting the gravels, then from calling the, the volcanic plug, the mountain, the White Mountain, within 40 years they were calling it the Green Mountain. It was covered in bamboo thickets. Now Wallace wrote in his journals, he said, I'm, I'm really worried about putting these other species in here because we might lose those endemic species that we'd seen nowhere else in the world. And he was dead right. They lost three of them. But, okay, the soldiers, soldiers never died. That bamboo thickets growing on the rocks had root masses like this. When it rained, it stored the water. Birds started coming in. Butterflies started coming in. Seals were coming in and spending more time on the land because there was more diversity for them. Suddenly this island had stability, it had resilience, it had more life. Now for the purists amongst us, we say, oh God, but we lost three species. Well, hold on. We may have lost three species, but what did we gain? And I'd say to all of us, get out of talking about species. Don't, don't discuss species. Discuss these processes, because this is what life hinges on. Now, and if that species is going to enhance these processes, fantastic. But we have this paradigm that says, oh, non-native, bad. But this country is full, full of non-natives. You're all closing them. But we focus on the fox, we focus on the cane toad, but there are hundreds and hundreds of benign species that have actually really benefited our environments here.